Hello everyone, I am here at the Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are going to be in John chapter 11. In John chapter 11 we'll be talking about the death of Lazarus, which of course then comes to Jesus comforting the sisters, Martha and Mary, which are Lazarus' sisters. They were followers of Jesus, all of them were. Jesus loved them all dearly. And then, of course, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And then, once again, there's a plot to kill Jesus. Which is not the first time, right? The teachers of the law were always out to get Jesus. They were out to get Jesus when he was just born. Remember, King Harold was wanting to kill him when he was just born, when he was a newborn. Before he was even born, actually, he sent people to look. You know, the wise men to go look for him. Okay, so um, the devotion tonight is by somebody you guys will recognize. It is by Grace Fox. And the verses that go along with her devotion tonight is John chapter 11, verses 43 and 44, which says... Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. It was like wrapped up like a mummy. So let's put that aside. All right, now let's go ahead and read, the, starting with the death of Lazarus. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. She, he was their brother. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by the world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. He meant dead, but they thought he was just sleeping. I don't know why they never understood what he was really saying. But they said, He has fallen asleep, Jesus said, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Remember, Thomas is the one who didn't believe that Jesus had rose from the dead. And he said he wouldn't believe it till he put his hand through the nail holes on Jesus' hand and the uh, cut in his side where they speared him. He wouldn't believe it till then. And Jesus appeared to him there with the other disciples one day and Jesus told him to go ahead. Stick your hand in. You know, here it is. He's had the markings. <laughs> he 
you imagine Thomas's face when that happened? It's like you wouldn't even know what to do. Now Jesus is going to come back now and he's going to comfort Martha and Mary and you'll see what happens now going into um, raising Lazarus from the dead four days after his death. So you know by that time being dead for four days there's going to be a horrible horrible odor and the body's going because the body decaying and everything Lazarus comes out whole and perfect when unwrapped from the bed clothes he just looks like Lazarus he don't look like he's you know decomposing or anything he's whole again on his arrival Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me, me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Yes, the shortest verse in the Bible right here, guys. John chapter 11, verse 30. Where did I go? Verse 30, um... Where did it go? Sorry, verse 35. John chapter 11, verse 35. My eyes were not working. The shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus cried. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? That's how much he loved Lazarus. He cried, even though he knew he could raise him from the dead. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Which Jesus could have. He could have came back earlier and kept Lazarus from dying. But remember, this is for Jesus to be glorified. People's, he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. More people is going to think, you know, Oh my God, look, this man just raised somebody from the dead four days after they've been dead rather than somebody coming back and like he did the little girl well she was dead too but like if somebody gets sick and then you know healing them making them feel better this is more like you know a more dramatic thing that a lot of people would believe you are the Christ and things you know this is the way it was supposed to be Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, 
By this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Martha. He was telling Martha. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. And he was perfectly fine. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did put their faith in him. Who wouldn't, right? But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Yeah, he did a horrible thing raising somebody from the dead. Yeah, let's not believe in this man who raised somebody from the dead and who heals the sick people. Let's not believe that he's the Christ. Let's just try to kill him. They even told Jesus that he had Satan in him. Satan doesn't do good, my friends. Satan only does evil. Satan would not do good for people. Jesus done no evil. Jesus only done good. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin, which is never good. They never have nothing good to say. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing miraculous signs. I think they were jealous because they couldn't do what Jesus could because they wanted everybody to look up to them, not Jesus. I know that's, that's my feeling. And they were angry that they couldn't do those things. And Jesus could. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them named Cathias, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than for the whole nation to perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Tell me how that um, they think it's okay to do that. Even though that's murder, they're always throwing up the law of Moses to Jesus. You know, when if Jesus says something that, different than Moses does, you know, they st stand strict to the law of Moses. Well, the law of Moses and the Ten Commandments God gave him also said, Thou shalt not kill. So what made them think they could kill Jesus, the Son of God, and that would be okay? They thought they were doing, they thought they were doing a service, the nation a favor, that they had to kill him. No. They were jealous of him. They didn't want Jesus getting any of the attention from the people. They wanted the people to listen to them. That's what it was. They wanted the people to listen to them. They are right under God. Nobody else. Not this man who showed up from Galilee. Nothing good can come from there. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews. Instead, he went and drew to a region near the desert, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. Remember, that's when they had the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples, during the Passover. You remember what the Passover is, right? The Passover was celebrated during the plagues, or meant to, you know, celebrate when God did the plagues in Egypt. 
the last one he did, the plague that took out the firstborn of every family, even the animals. He took out Pharaoh's, you know, oldest son, the Pharaoh's oldest son. And that's what made him finally release them. But the Passover, they passed over the people. They passed over the Jewish people, the Hebrews that were there. They had to take a lamb's blood and smear it when the, they're like above their door frame, on their door frame on the outside. And death would pass by the houses with the lamb's blood on it and not enter there and take any lives. But the Egyptians, of course, were not doing that like Pharaoh and them. So, all the firstborns were taken to anybody who did not have the blood of lamb's blood on their door. So, that is a Passover, uh, death passing over them. That is why they celebrate this, the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus, and as they stood in the temple area, they asked one another, What do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? But the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone found out where Jesus was, he should report it so they might arrest him. Arrest him for what? What would be the charge? Even Pilate didn't have no reason why they even had Jesus there. He knew what their real motives were. That's why he tried and tried to get them to release Jesus. He didn't want to put him to death, but that is what the people kept screaming for. The teachers of the law and them encouraged them. So Pilate gave in and washed his hands in a bowl of water and said he washed his hands of Jesus' death, that it was on their heads. And they said, let it be on us and our children. They don't know what they were saying or what they were doing. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. No, they sure didn't, did they? Sure didn't. Okay. So let's go to the devotion. Again, it's by Grace Fox tonight. And what does she say tonight? Here's what she says. A friend of mine is an image consultant. She helps clients sort their clothes, decide what to keep and what to discard, and shop for new items. Together they develop a personal wardrobe that complements the client's skin tone and body type and reflects his or her personality. <gasps> I didn't even know there was such a job, did you guys? Wow, I didn't know some people lived that way. Never heard of that before. Did you know the Bible mentions wardrobes? Take Lazarus' story. He was buried wearing grave clothes designed for the dead. That was, you know, what they did back then. His outfit was appropriate for the occasion, but it became outdated the moment Jesus brought him back to life. Unwrap him, Jesus commanded. In other words, strip off the old and don the new, clothes fit for the living. As believers, we ought to pay attention to our spiritual wardrobe. Colossians 3, 5 through 9 describes our grave clothes prior to placing our faith in Jesus. Sexual sin, shameful desires, anger, rage, malice behavior, or sorry, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language, and lies. The moment Jesus gives us new life, those grave clothes no longer reflect who we are. We are to discard them and clothe ourselves in mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We are to make allowance for each other's faults and forgive those who offend us. The most important piece of clothing we are to wear is love. My friend meets clients who hesitate to part with old familiar outfits. She encourages them to be ruthless and to reinvest in new clothes that work better for them. Let's do the same with our spiritual wardrobe. We are alive in Christ, so let's clothe ourselves in a wardrobe that reflects him. 
and that was a good good one and the homework that she's got tonight is look in your closet for a piece of clothing you no longer wear if it's in good condition give it to someone who will enjoy it because some people that your used clothes could be like new and wonderful to them i mean it's to sherman i we always welcome hand-me-downs you know people really appreciate stuff like that you can give them the homeless shelters and places like that as well if not discard it i wouldn't say discard it i would say you know put it in a bag for goodwill or take it to a homeless shelter stuff like that instead of just throwing it away homeless shelter would be the best because they could give it away to people and like goodwill and stuff they charge and believe it or not a lot of their prices in a goodwill are expensive liken it to discarding a sinful attitude or behavior I was like we was at goodwill here about a year or two ago and uh there was a pair of boots in there and I was going to get them for Sherm because he needed a pair of boots. They were his exact size. I thought, oh, this is a sign. I have to get these boots. And I'm like, how much are these? Because they had them in, a, in the glass cabinet. They put certain things in the glass cabinet. It's random things. And they said they were $50. $50. I'm like, you know, forget, you know, I can't get those then. Those are too much. You can go to the store and buy a brand new pair for that. I could go to Walmart and get him a pair for that if I had that kind of money. You know what I mean? $50. And people give them that stuff for free. That's all I'm saying. A lot of people are complaining about it. Trust me. And maybe it's just the Goodwills we have around here. But a lot of people are complaining about them. That a lot of people are throwing their stuff out instead of giving it to Goodwill. People that I know that used to take a lot of stuff there, they're now throwing it out instead of taking it there because the prices they're putting on their stuff. They said, I gave them this stuff, and then they got it in there for, like, higher than a new price. She said, I'm tired of doing this. I'm just throwing it out. People can't afford it when they go there anyway, She's, you know, she said. And it's true. It's really true. But uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. I'll see you guys again soon with another Bible study. Bye guys.